So the principles or forces on which this transpiration pull works are or can be written as cohesive force and adhesive force. Cohesive and adhesive forces. What exactly is meant by cohesive force? The attraction between attraction between the same type of particles. As we are talking of transpiration loss of water, here we mean the force of attraction which exists between water and water molecules or identical molecules. Between identical molecules. That force of attraction is known as cohesive force. An adhesive force is again force of attraction between different types of molecules. So this is attraction between the particles of different types, between different particles. So here we will take the force of attraction between water and water molecule. An adhesive force will be the force of attraction between water molecule and the lining of xylem vessel which is made up of lignin. So between lignin molecule. Now how does this help? When one water molecule gets attracted or is pulled, because of this force, the other water molecule is also going to come along with this water molecule. Suppose we talk of a water column. Say this is the lignified wall of xylem and we are talking of water molecules in this. Say these are all water molecules here. Due to adhesive force between water and lignin, one water molecule gets pulled towards lignin or attracted towards lignin. Water has a high adhesive force also with lignin. So it gets pulled towards lignin. Now, it gets pulled towards lignin because of adhesive force. But when this water molecule is going, it is pulling the other molecule along with it due to a strong cohesive force also. That means if this water molecule goes up, it is also pulling another water molecule. That means the whole water column is going to rise up. So these forces help in maintaining a continuous water column in the xylem vessel. So this is one important force. The second is known as capillary force or capillarity theory. capillary force. If there is a narrow tube and we can understand it by using the example of a straw. Suppose we want to drink a liquid using a straw and the straws they come in different diameters. Suppose we take two straws. One straw is a very thin straw and the other straw is a thicker one. We would find the level of liquid in these two straws is going to be different. In the thicker one, that means the straw which has a thicker or wider diameter, the liquid is going to rise up to a certain level. And in case of the thinner straw or the straw with the narrower diameter, the liquid is going to rise up to even higher level. That means thinner the tube is, higher is the level of liquid. This is called capillarity or property of capillary. This thin tube is called a capillary. Xylem vessels are made up of cells in which the layer or the wall between the cells is lost and that results into formation of a very thin capillary. We are talking of xylem vessels which are cells so the lumen is going to be extremely thin and if the tube is thin, the water is going to rise to a certain height. Now, two forces which help in transpiration pull. One is cohesive adhesive force. Cohesive is attraction between identical particles, water, water in this case. Adhesive is between unlike particles. Here, water and lignin. Lignin which is found in the wall of the xylem vessels. 
and second is capillary force. Capillary force basically means thinner the tube, the water rises on its own due to this property of capillarity. Now using these forces, how is this pull created? So let us draw a diagram to understand how this pull is created and how these forces help the water column to rise up to the height of few feet to meters. Let us draw the structure. That means we are talking of the roots here absorbing water through this root hair and we are not going into details of this. We have already understood this process. We want to see how the water moves up to the topmost leaf. Now this is the stem with its branching and let us talk of a leaf. This is the leaf that we are talking of. Here is a leaf and this is the epidermis of the leaf and here is a stomata. We know the structure of leaves also. In leaves, if we draw the structure separately, upper epidermis, which is in case of dicot if we are talking of, then upper epidermis is invariably without stomata and it is covered with cuticle to minimize the loss of water. The lower epidermis has stomata. Most of the stomata which are present, they are on the lower epidermis so that the transpiration takes place but it is in a controlled manner. And the parenchymatous cells which are present here, they are palisade parenchyma, compactly arranged and here is say a vascular bundle palisade parenchyma is here and then lower layers are of spongy parenchyma that means parenchymatous cells are loosely arranged. Near the opening of stomata we find there are spaces. Now we know that this part which is vascular bundle actually has phloem and xylem. That means the tube that is going up the xylem vessel. From here the xylem starts, it goes up, it branches here. This is that thin capillary which is going up, branches here and these capillaries are going to take the water up. Here also this goes through the midrib and the branches come here. That means the branch of xylem which we are talking of has reached up to the stomata. It is not touching the stomata, it is very close to it. So here there is an opening. So when we say a tube, the tube would be something like this, the xylem tube and here there is going to be an opening. So there is an opening here. And in this opening there is water which is rising up. Now, this water evaporates because it's a pipe. Imagine this is a pipe and here there is an opening. So this space which is there, which is this space, which is stomatal uh, gap or space, here there is going to be all humidity or water vapor accumulating. So this water evaporates and what accumulates here is water vapor. This water vapor is going to be lost through this stomata and the reason why it gets lost could be higher temperature on the outer side, less humidity on the outer side. So from high water humidity or like water vapor content to low water vapor content, the water vapor is going to come out. If water vapor is leaving this space, then continuously water is evaporating from the xylem vessel. And if water is continuously evaporating, then it creates a suction. Again, we will go back to the example of straw. We said that if there is a thin capillary, water rises on its own. In this case, say the water has risen to this level. And if we want to drink this liquid using this straw, the liquid is not going to come on its own into our mouth we will have to suck the liquid up. What are we doing when we are sucking the liquid up? We are actually removing the air which is here in the remaining part of the straw. So when we remove the air, a vacuum or a suction is created. And that is why 
this is known as a pull in case of root pressure we said the water is coming in and it is pushing the water column from the bottom here due to continuous loss of this water vapor through this opening the water continuously evaporates from the open end of the xylem vessel and this creates a suction which results in the upward movement of water there are other things which are helping the water which has risen due to root pressure up to certain height due to capillarity again up to certain height and cohesive and adhesive forces are also helping so loss of water through transpiration results in formation of a pull or it creates a pull and because this pull is created due to transpiration we call it transpiration pull this is strong enough to take the water column up to the topmost level of the leaf so one more time a quick recap the water which has gone in from the soil by absorption process reaches up to the xylem vessel now in the xylem there are multiple forces which are working there is a root pressure which is continuously pushing this water column because of this root pressure water can rise few centimeters but not to great heights then other forces like capillary force by which the water rises in a narrower capillary adhesive and cohesive force would maintain a compact column of this water molecules and loss of water from this stomata that is water vapor which is lost from here this is the vapor which is accumulated near that stomatal aperture and that water vapor has generated by evaporation of this liquid water which is at the tip of the xylem as this water is continuously evaporating here at the xylem level there is a pull created a suction created and as this pull is due to transpiration we call it transpiration pull so when we talk of ascent of sap it is there are many forces which are working but the main one which is responsible for moving this water column to the height of few meters is transpiration pull root pressure does help but only to short plants in these tall plants it would again help but only to push the water only up to certain centimeters or lesser height so two processes which help in absorption of water first one was absorption that means through root hair and then second is ascent of sap so by these two forces uh, root pressure and transpiration pull water can reach up to all the parts of the plant only one thing which we have to remember is movement of water is unidirectional that means it will always move from root upwards in case of uh, food transport we will see that the movement takes place in multiple directions so absorption of water from root hair and then ascent of sap water has reached up to each and every part of the plant let us talk about mineral absorption by the plants so first minerals are absorbed and then they will be transported so we are talking of mineral absorption there are two ways in which these minerals get absorbed either actively or passively again absorption is through these root hair through which the water also gets absorbed through the same root hair minerals will also get absorbed now if the mineral in the soil is in high concentration then the movement is going to be passive that means from higher concentration to lower concentration the process is known as diffusion and these minerals would be taken in without expenditure of energy by passive movement only condition which is required is mineral concentration should be higher in the soil as compared to the plant but this is not the situation every time many a times the minerals which are present in soil they are in less concentration so this is situation 1 where minerals are higher 
in concentration. Suppose mineral concentration is low or very low as compared to what is in the plant. Then it has to move from low concentration to higher concentration. So here the concentration is high. That means this has to be done with expenditure of energy. So this is by active transport. So conditions are different in both the cases from high concentration if at all it is there it will simply move in or diffuse in without any expenditure of energy the process is going to be passive. But if which is the most common method or which is the more common situation we can say that if in the soil mineral concentration is less and if it is required by the plant it cannot move in passively it has to be actively taken in. Once it is actively taken in then its movement takes place with water. So now minerals will move with water. So after this movement is going to be with water. Absorption is different depending upon their concentration in the soil. Now let us talk about transport of food in the next